Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over some severe storms which are going to be impacting the central United States with all that warm air to the west and that cold air to the east. We're going to have a division right through the middle of the country and all of that will create some storms, especially uh, in parts of the Great Plains. We already have a slight risk out for uh, today, tomorrow, and also for Monday. Uh, so this is going to be a multi-day, uh, rather widespread severe weather van. We're going to be timing this out and giving you a good idea idea of what you should be expecting over the next uh, couple of minutes as I kind of break down the forecast for you guys. Uh, also, one announcement, this is my 300th video in a row, so thank you all for uh, liking the videos, uh, subscribing to my channel, watching the videos, because that really does motivate me to get up every day and make these videos, uh, so hopefully we can reach 500 videos in a row and just keep on going with the streak uh, and we'll try and see how how long I can keep this streak uh, alive with the uh, with the videos. So here is what the current National Weather Service page looks like. Uh, we have some red flag warnings in effect for parts of the southwest. We have wind advisories in uh, parts of Southern California uh, but other than that we don't see many other watches or warnings currently in effect across the country. Yesterday we had a high temperature in Death Valley, California where they got up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit and a low temperature in Dixie, Idaho where they got uh, down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest precipitation or rainfall report was in Bill Baggs Cape State uh, Park, Florida where they got 2.16 inches of rainfall and there were no snowfall reports uh, as of yesterday. Here is what the current uh, uh, day one outlook looks like from the Storm Prediction Center uh, and you can see that we have a slight risk which goes all the way from Denver down in through parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and eastern uh, New Mexico. So all of those areas currently covered in a slight risk for today. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be uh, areas further west that are going to be more impacted uh, with uh, these storms. Uh, I know a couple of you guys were pointing that out in the comment section just a couple of days ago uh, where you guys were having a discussion among yourself talking about how you guys thought it was going to be more in western Oklahoma, western Texas, and the that is actually what's happening now. We are dealing with more of these storms uh, happening in the western side, uh, closer to the Rockies, uh, over the, uh, and that's what we've been seeing over the past couple of days with the model shifting ever so slightly uh, to the west. Here is the day two outlook for tomorrow, uh, and you can see it's a smaller area of slight risk, but it still covers parts of uh, Colorado, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma, and also into northern Texas. And those are the areas that are expecting that slight risk and the height of the severe weather for tomorrow. And then a big area uh, for Monday, uh, you can see that western Oklahoma, southern Kansas, a little bit of Colorado, and northern Texas, all of those areas are under a slight risk. And it's pretty much over that same exact area as we saw for the Sunday outlook. So uh, you can see how pretty much the same area in the western uh, plains, I guess you could say uh, part of the western half of the Great Plains, uh, is where we're dealing with most of the severe weather and it looks like it's going to be over that same area for a couple of days in a row so you're really not going to get too much of a break uh, from these storms so let's time this out for you guys as you can see we're going to be looking at uh, the FV3 high resolution model and this is a new model that came out but I do think it's actually rather uh, detailed and I actually do like using it quite a bit so I'm going to continue to use this you'll probably see me using this model a lot more over the past or over the next couple of weeks uh, and months uh, as we go through the severe weather season you can start to see some of that instability uh, firing up over parts of the uh, of Colorado New Mexico Texas where you're starting to see a few supercells and a few cells of thunderstorms uh, starting to uh, pop up but uh, eventually going through the evening hours uh, tonight so this is around six or seven o'clock you're gonna start to see a lot more uh, develop and more of a line of storms that are gonna be a lot more robust and a lot more damaging uh, potentially so you can see these uh, brighter colors indicating that we have heavier rainfall uh, heavier uh, rainfall rates and also um, most likely stronger winds maybe a little bit of hail uh, and maybe one or two tornadoes as well and this would be by Saturday night, uh, so tonight, uh, very late, so this would be around 11 or 12 o'clock tonight, and then into tomorrow morning, these line, this line of storms does continue to move further east, so now uh, parts of western Texas, western Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Colorado 
are out of the picture in terms of uh, these storms but now uh, areas in Kansas northern Texas southern Texas as well are now in uh, the picture for some of these storms to develop uh, it doesn't look like today is going to be the biggest threat for storms I think the most of your storms will actually happen on Sunday even though it's in a smaller area that small area will be dealing with rather robust and intense storms so you can see those storms linger around they're not going to completely uh, diminish here so this is around three in the morning four in the morning on a Sunday so tomorrow morning uh, and then just continuing this forward you can see how that just stalls out there it really does not move at all within this area so still by Sunday uh, in the late morning hours so around 11 o'clock in the morning we're still dealing with some of these storms uh, lingering through Texas Oklahoma and Kansas uh, and of Eventually, that will push out. You're going to now start to see that we're going to reload. So these storms are always going to start uh, back into Colorado, New Mexico, western Texas, western Oklahoma, and then eventually they'll push further to the east uh, and gradually weaken as they do push uh, further to the east. So that's going to be your pattern. You're going to start to see them uh, start up over in this area, and then eventually, uh, over a couple of hours, they're going to head further to the east, and they're going to end up uh, within this area right here. Here. So it's going to be more of a cycle of these storms every day. You're going to see that pretty much the same cycle uh, take place. So uh, you can see that by tomorrow night uh, these storms are getting rather robust and it's going to be over this area that the storm prediction center highlighted that's going to see the bulk of the severe weather for tomorrow night into early on monday morning so you're starting to see a few of these bigger clusters of storms we have one into missouri kansas and also into eastern oklahoma another one through the panhandles of oklahoma and texas uh, and then we also have a few more back in colorado that's even mixing with a little bit of snow in the higher elevations uh, believe it or not and uh, other than that, these storms look to stay fairly far to the north. It looks like if you live further to the south, so within this area right here, you'll probably miss out on most of these storms. So this is going to be one of those uh, types of events that miss out on the areas further south and stay uh, pushed a little bit further to the north. So this will be right around 10 or 11 o'clock on Sunday night and you can see that these storms continue to just stall out through parts of Oklahoma Colorado even into Missouri as well the uh, the most severe of the storms uh, centered over Oklahoma Texas and Colorado uh, and if we continue this forward this would be by very early on Monday morning still uh, we're dealing with that uh, with that rainfall and those thunderstorms through parts of Oklahoma uh, Colorado Missouri and some of the surrounding areas as well uh, and those are just going to continue to diminish over the next couple of hours through uh, Monday morning. So here's the CAPE values, the convective available potential energy. This is just a way of measuring the instability in the atmosphere. And usually once you get above this light blue shade, so once you get above 1000 CAPE uh, or 1000 joules per kilogram, that's when you're starting to get into more of a prime pattern for these storms to develop. So especially once you're getting into the yellow and orange colors, which is indicating two to maybe even three and a half thousand uh, uh, joules per kilogram and CAPE values, that's when you're really starting to heat up with these uh, with the instability. So you can see that by uh, tonight we have high instability through parts of northern Texas and western Oklahoma and central Oklahoma as well uh, and that's the area that is going to be impacted by the storm so you're going to see that uh, all of this cape out to the east is really going to help these storms once they move into this area fuel up and actually strengthen a little bit before eventually they do weaken so that'll really help uh, these storms do quite well within this environment if we look at Sunday or tomorrow you can see that it's even higher cape values especially further to the south so it, uh, it, based on what we're seeing from the models it looks like most of the storms will be uh, centered within this area right here but some of these uh, some of these higher cape values are centering into these regions so further to the south we have very high instability uh, 30 uh, 3500 to 4500 or more uh, cape uh, within these areas but that's not going to be the area that's going to be affected by these storms it'll be the area actually further to the north so Within that area, we have Cape values between about 750 and about 2,500. Uh, so still rather high Cape values within those areas. If we look at the dew points, which is also going to be really, really important. Uh, normally, you would want dew points that are above 60. Preferably, they would be above about 63 or 64. Uh, and we have that all throughout this region in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas. So this entire area has Cape or dew point values that are above about 60 five degrees and then 
if we look at the dew points for Sunday, uh, really, really humid as you get further to the south into southeastern Texas. Uh, but as you get further to the north, we're still dealing with dew points that are mostly just in the mid and low 60s. So not super impressive, but definitely enough to support a thunderstorm or two uh, within these areas. And if we also look at the high temperatures, which is, of course, going to be important, you need warmer air uh, to actually support these storms. Uh, you can see that we have temperatures that are going to be all in the 70s uh, through parts of uh, eastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, and then even into the 80s uh, throughout this corridor from western Oklahoma down into southwestern Texas and southeastern New Mexico. So really, really warm temperatures for today uh, within those areas. And if we look at Sunday, uh, within that area that is expecting the storms, we have temperatures that are going to be in the mid-70s. Definitely going to be a comfortable day until the storms arrive uh, within the later evening hours and then once they arrive uh, they'll move out probably within an hour or two of their arrival so this is actually going to be quite a nice pattern uh, over the next couple of days. We're going to have storms in the afternoon, uh, but the morning hours are really going to be very, very nice and comfortable, not dealing with that very uncomfortable summer heat, uh, which sometimes we do get in mid to late May. So really going to be a nice pattern. Hopefully you guys are going to be enjoying uh, this weather because I know uh, I definitely will. It's, a ver it's going to be a very nice pattern, uh, just a couple degrees below what is normal. Uh, and in the southern plains, that really does help. Help, out, uh, help you guys avoid all that humidity and all that warm air. So uh, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Again, thank you guys for helping me hit that 300-day upload streak. Uh, and also, just consider subscribing, leaving a like, and uh, turning on notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.